going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I got all of the TPMS sensors replaced in the truck. Back working on the Evo though, I fixed the suspension or steering issue that I was having. It's super hot down here in Texas right now, so I haven't driven the car too much, but I have taken it out a little bit in the mornings. Car feels great, everything feels amazing. It does not feel like there's anything wrong with it but it is throwing two codes. I'm definitely gonna get those fixed, but I have been wrenching on this thing with the new turbo, all the other upgrades for the last six months. The last thing that I got to paint for the car were the calipers down here that I did the orange. That was probably eight or nine months ago, so I wanna paint something else. For this video, I'm gonna be painting something on the car that most people don't, the intercooler. Stay tuned. As you can see, the rest of the car looks really good. All of my nice fresh paint down here on the wheels and calipers. Wheels could definitely be a little bit better, but I was really proud of how the calipers turned out. When you come around to the front here, you have this nasty, disgusting intercooler. I did pick this thing up secondhand. Somebody else had already put the stencils on there. You can see it's just faded away over time. I know your first thought, and that is why would you paint your intercooler? If I throw a couple of layers of paint on there, it's not going to work as well, and you are right. But if you're familiar with the channel, the car is tuned conservatively. This is not a car that I race, so a little bit of paint on the outside is not going to hurt this thing one bit. This again is not my first painting project, but I am far from an expert. Last thing that I painted, like I said, were the calipers. Before that, I did the a little bit of dirt there. First thing that I ever painted with the spray gun setup are these rear aprons. For being my first project ever with a spray gun setup and a compressor, it came out really, really good. One paint project that I can't seem to ever get right. First time that I painted this front lip, I tried sanding one of the runs and I burned through. Resprayed the clear, got a bunch of more runs. I sanded those out. I was able to get the clear coat polished down really nice. I went to remove this thing and I guess because you have to twist it a little bit to get it to unhook, some of the paint started cracking and chipping away right here. I'm going to be tackling that in the next video. Here's everything that I've got so far for doing this project. Start from this side. I've got my respirator, Harbor Freight purple gun for primer, Harbor Freight spectrum gun. It has the 1.3 tip for base and clear coat. Also using the spectrum disposable cup kit. This is my old one right here, but they had these on sale. So I just went ahead and picked up another starter kit. You will need this little adapter that Harbor Freight sells to work with this gun. And it actually works for the purple gun also. For my paint, I've got my primer over here. It's this pro form producer. I probably should be using extra extra slow right now, but this is all I've got. For my base coats, this is the same black that I used for the wheels. It's just a generic black base. And then I'm going to be doing something a little special with this orange here. It's the same orange that I used for the calipers. It's a factory Lamborghini color. It's Arancio Ishtar, the most expensive paint I have ever bought. Clear coat, it's this Gentech kick-ass clear. Again, all I've got is slow reducer, so that's just gonna have to work. It's not that big of a piece, so it should be fine. I picked these up for my air supply. This is what I've used every single time. I've got an assortment of just sandpaper and stuff like that over here. Tape and drape for the garage. And what I am most excited about is my custom little stencil here to represent my channel. Before I get to any of this though, I've got to get the car up in the air. I've got to get the front bumper off and get this intercooler out of here.
ETS intercooler is out. Just to make things easy on myself and I don't have a big front bumper laying around, I went ahead and put the OEM intercooler back on and then put the front bumper back on over that. First thing before I can do any painting is I've got to get this all prepped up. For the most part, it's pretty much bare metal. I do want to sand some of this in here. I'm not going to paint where the fins are at. I'm actually going to tape those off. There's a few in here that are damaged, but I may try to straighten them out the best that I can. The other thing that I've got to do is get the car moved over and then get the garage taped off. So I'm going to get the intercooler all sanded down, all prepped up, and then I'll get it all taped off. And then I will move the car over and work on getting the garage taped off. Intercooler is all prepped up and ready to go for paint. I just sanded everything down with these maroon scuff pads. After that, I got everything masked off around the sides and the bottom. Originally, I just used my green tape here and I tried laying it on there and cutting it. The problem is, is that some of these fans are raised and some are lowered so that when you try to make those cuts, it's not exactly straight. I had this quarter inch vinyl tape left over from when I did the flames on Jagger's wagon. It doesn't cover the entire fin area, but it just leaves a little bit on the outside. It was a little bit of extra work, did take a little bit of extra time, but I 
do think I'm gonna like this much better. The garage is obviously not masked off just yet. I wanted to show you my compressor setup. I have used my little hot dog compressor here to paint everything. If you were painting a full car, you would probably not be able to get away with it, but for small items, this little compressor works great. Coming out of the compressor, you've got this dual setup. It is an air oil separator and then a desiccant dryer on this side. As you saw earlier, I refilled the beads over here. Coming out of there, I specifically use this green hose for painting. It all stays connected in a loop when I'm not using it so that nothing gets inside of there. Coming out all the way over here, I've got another air oil separator and then I've got another little small desiccant dryer and then a filter at the very top. Having this set up right here and then having this over here keeps that air nice and dry. And the last thing in line over here is my regulator. Now that the intercooler is all ready to go, air supply is all ready to go, I'm gonna get the garage all masked off and then I'll go ahead and get the primer mixed up and get it laid down. got the primer already laid down. It doesn't look like much out here. It just looks pretty makeshift, but when you walk around here, it gives you perfect coverage. It covers everything inside of the garage, and then you've got a perfect amount of room to paint this thing. I usually throw down a few good coats of primer, but because I don't want to build this up, I still want to be able to keep the efficiency of it as high as I can. I just laid one base coat down, sprinkled it, and then one heavy coat over the top of that. My plan is to pretty much do the same thing with the base and the clear. My gun settings, I use this thing at about 23 PSI. For the purple gun, there's not a whole lot of fan adjustment. Pretty much when you turn that thing all the way, you either get a jet stream or you get a fan. Crank it all the way up, it will make that fan really, really wide. But you can pretty much put that knob anywhere in between and it'll give you a little medium-sized fan. Works pretty good for a little $15 gun, especially for just using it for primer. I clean my guns every single time right after I use them, especially the primer gun, because that stuff hardens on there and it is almost impossible to clean it off afterwards. I'm not going to be laying down base today. I could, it's probably already dry out here. The temperature is like 105 and I'm using that slow reducer. I will catch back up with you guys in a day or two and get the base coat and clear coat on here.
are all finished off. Overall though, super stoked. I can't wait to get the clear coat on here. You saw how I did my stencil down there. I pretty much just cut everything in half. I lined everything up, measured everything out. I just used regular computer paper to tape it around. One thing that I did do that I did not say ahead of time is I did lay down some primer first. I wasn't sure how well that orange was gonna cover over the blacks. I figured it would cover the gray a lot better. For the primer, since I didn't need much and I had it on hand, I just used a little rattle can over here of filler primer. It's always nice to have those around for small jobs like this. And then I decided not to use my big gun. I decided to use the little bitty one that I have here. Again, the amount of paint that I was having to use was not very much. I didn't want to have to bust the big gun out. Super, super stoked to be this far though. The only thing that I've got to do now is lay down the clear coat. I will catch back up with you guys in a day or two and we will get this clear coat on there. issues at all this piece is pretty flat so no runs i did one light coat waited for it to get tacky and then did one heavy coat the only thing that i am worried about right now is when i peel the tape up right here i'm afraid it's going to take away from being able to see the logo I do have a fix for that but it's going to require just a little bit more work either way i'm going to let the clear coat dry i'll come back once it is and peel all these little pieces off if it looks bad i will do what i think i can do to fix it if it looks okay i'll go ahead and pull off the rest of the masking and get this thing on the car cooler is fully painted. I've already got it installed on the car. When I peeled the tape originally, it was really hard to see the logo in between where the fins are at. All I did was lay the stencil back over it. I taped off all the areas that I had already painted. I wanted to keep the least amount of coats of paint on those fins as possible, so I did not use any primer. I just used base and clear. It looks really good right now. I'm sure over time bugs and rocks and things will come up and hit it. One other thing I did before putting the bumper back on is I took these little air ducts out. It just opens that up a little bit more and you can see all the sides, but extremely, extremely 
extremely happy with this. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything else going on with the Evo. And I will catch you guys next time.